limits and continuity of a function. Limits are very useful in finding the behavior of a function near a point. Many a times the function is not defined at a given point and in such a case it does not have a value at that point but its behavior near this point can always be found using limits. Let's look at this example. If fx is x square minus 9 upon x minus 3, we can see the function is not defined at x is equal to 3. But if we write the numerator x square minus 9 as two factors x minus 3, x plus 3 and divide by x minus 3, we get x plus 3. At x is equal to 3, now the value of the function is 6. How do we define limit? Let's say we are given a function fx and it is defined in an open interval about some point x0 and not necessarily at x0. Then for some positive integer delta which is greater than 0 such that whenever mod of x minus x0 is less than delta, it implies mod of fx minus l is less than epsilon, where epsilon is some positive small number. We then say limit of fx as x approaches x0 is l and it is written as limit fx extending to 0 is l. This is called the precise definition of limit. Here, in layman's language, it say we mean whenever the difference between x and x0 becomes small, the function fx starts approaching capital L, the limit. How do we find this delta algebraically? Now, let's say we are given fx, epsilon, x0 and L and we have to find delta. We do that in two steps. First, we find mod of fx minus l less than epsilon and write it as minus epsilon less than fx minus l less than epsilon. This we have done by removing the modulus. And we solve this inequality for an interval of x such that it contains x0. So we find the interval AB containing x0. Next we will solve mod of x minus x0 less than delta and write it as minus delta less than x minus x0 less than delta. And again we get an interval for x. We will then compare the two inequalities, one from step 1 and the other from step 2 and we will find the value of delta. Let's look at some examples. What if our fx is given to be x minus 5, l is given to be 2, x0 is 7 and epsilon is 0 0.1 and we are asked to find the value of delta. We will start with mod of fx minus l is less than epsilon. We will put the function fx, we will put the value of l and epsilon and then we'll remove the modulus and we will get minus 0 0.1 less than x minus 7 is less than 0 0.1. Now if we add 7 all over, we get an interval x is greater than 6.9 and less than 7. We will call this inequality as 1. In the next step, we will simplify modulus x minus x naught is less than delta. And by removing the modulus and putting the value of x0, we get minus delta is less than x minus 7, less than delta. If we add 7, we get 7 minus delta is less than x, less than delta plus 7. This gives us another inequality or we get an interval for x. We will compare the inequalities 1 and 2 and both of them are giving us intervals about x0. If we compare the left and right sides of these inequalities, 
we get 7 minus delta is 6.9 which gives us delta is 0.1 and second the right hand side gives us 7 plus delta 7.1 which gives us delta as 0 0.1 so both the values are same what if they were different we would have taken the smaller value just to assure that our point lies in the interval a b if delta value is taken as the larger one then our conditions of interval the point lies in the interval not will not be satisfied let's take another example here fx is square root of 3x minus 2, l, x0, epsilon, they are all given. We have to find delta. We repeat the same process. We will open the modulus and we will get minus epsilon is less than root of 3x minus 2 minus 2 less than epsilon. And when we substitute epsilon, we get 1.99 is less than root of 3x minus 2 less than 2.01. We need an x in the center. But here we have root of 3x minus 2. So we will take square all over. And when we square we get 3.9601 less than 3x minus 2 less than 4.0401. If we add... 2 all over, we are left with 3x in the center. So we get 3x is greater than 5.9601 and less than 6.0401. We need an x in the center. Here we have 3x. So let's divide by 3. So when we divide by 3 all over, we will get the first inequality 1.9867 is less than x, less than 2.0133. On solving, mod of x minus x naught is less than delta, we get x minus 2 is greater than minus delta, less than delta. When we add 2 all over, we get x is greater than 2 minus delta, less than delta plus 2. So we have two inequalities, 1 and 2. And now if we compare the left and right hand sides, we get one value of delta is 0 0.0133. Other one also is same. It is 0 0.0133. So delta value is 0 0.0133. Let's look at another example now. Here fx has x plus 1 in the denominator. Again we are given L x naught epsilon and we have to find delta. So, we will start with mod of fx minus l is less than epsilon and when we put the function value in l and the epsilon value, we when we remove the modulus sign, we get 1 upon x plus 1 minus half is less than 0 0.2 and greater than minus 0 0.2. If we add half all over, we get 0 0.3 is less than 1 upon x plus 1 less than 0 0.7. Now we do not need 1 upon x plus 1. We need an x in the center. So let's do it in two steps. First we will invert this inequality and then we will subtract 1. So when we take the inverse all over, we get 1 upon 0 0.3 and remember the sign of inequality will change because we are taking inverse. So now we have greater than one of, uh, greater than x plus one, greater than one upon zero point seven. So on simplifying, this is what we get. When we subtract one all over, we get zero point four two eight five is less than x, less than two point three 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 three. When we solve mod of x minus x naught less than delta, we get. 1 minus delta is less than x, less than delta plus 1. And when we compare the left and right hand sides of both the inequalities 1 and 2, we get delta values as 0 0.5715 and 1.3333. So we take the smaller value of delta 
and this gives us delta is 0.5715. In the next example now, we have fx is x squared minus 5. So in this case, function has a square. L is given, x naught is given and epsilon is given. We have to find delta. So when we solve the inequality fx minus L modulus of fx minus L is less than epsilon, we first remove the modulus sign which gives us x square minus 16 is greater than minus 1 and less than 1. Now, if we add 16, we get 15 is less than x square less than 17. We don't need a square in the center of the inequality. We need an x. So, we have to take square root. Now, just because we had x naught is equal to 4, which was a positive number, we have taken square root of 15 as plus 3.8730 and square root of 17 as plus 4.1231. We have to remember when we take square root, we get two values, plus minus with plus minus sign. Now, what if we had in the question x naught is minus 4? Then the first inequality will change and we will take the negative sign because now the interval is different. So, we get minus 3.8730 and minus 4.1231. Now, if we change the sign of inequality, this is what we get as the first equation. The second one will give us minus delta less than x minus 4 less than delta. So, 4 minus delta will be less than x less than delta plus 4. If we compare 1 and 2, we will get delta as 0 0.127 and 0 0.1231. The minimum of the two is 0 0.1231 and that is the value of delta. Let's take another example where a function is 2ax plus b. a is positive and n is given to be 4a plus b. x naught is 2. Epsilon is some constant c. Here, we can see once we have put the value of the function and L and epsilon values are substituted and we open the modulus sign, we get fx minus L is greater than minus C less than C. On simplifying, we get 2ax minus 4a is less than C greater than minus C. If we add 4a all over, this is what we get. 4a minus c is less than 2ax, less than 4a plus c. But we did not want 2ax in the center. We needed x. So we will divide by 2a and this will give us x is greater than 4a minus c upon 2a, less than 4a plus c upon 2a. When we simplify x mod of x minus x not less than delta, we get x minus 2 is greater than minus delta less than delta. If we add 2 all over, we get 2 minus delta is less than x less than 2 plus delta. And when we compare 1 and 2 and solve the left and right hand sides, we get delta is equal to c by 2a. How do we define left and right hand limits? A function is said to have a limit L as x approaches x0 if and only if it has a left and a right hand limit and they both are equal. So what are left hand limits and right hand limits? Left hand limit is found when we approach x0 from the left of the interval and we write this as limit of fx as x tending to x0 minus. The notation minus is used for the left hand limit. And right hand limit is written as lim limit 
fx x tending to x0 plus. In this case, we are approaching x0 from the right side. The limit of a function as x tends to x0 exists if and only if the limit from the left and limit from the right, they both are equal to each other. How do we define continuity of a function? A function is said to be continuous when continuous at a point x is equal to x0 when three conditions are satisfied. First is the function should exist at that point x0, the limit of the function should exist and limit of the function should be equal to the value of the function at that point. In layman's language, a function is to be con is said to be continuous at a point if it has no breaks. Let's take an example. A function fx is defined as follows. We have function fx is equal to minus x in the interval x is equal to fx is equal to minus x. So here we can see the interval is given to be minus 2 is less than x is less than equal to 0. That is we are talking about this interval from minus 2 to 0. We can see that in this interval our fx is equal to minus x. That is the graph of the function is this. Now at this interval x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. That is from this point to this we have our function fx is equal to x which means y is equal to x. This is the function defined here. At x is equal to 1 at this point our function value is given to be half. We can see this. And for x greater than 1 and less than or equal to 2, our function value is constant and it is 1. All over we can see it is 1. So, if we are asked to find the points of continuity and discontinuity, how do we find that? Here, let's see, there are two points of continuity. One is x is equal to 0. Now, at x is equal to 0, we see if we approach the point x from the left, what is happening to the function? Function is moving towards the value x is equal to 0. What happens when we approach 0 from the right? Then also we can see the graph of function is this and a function from this value to this function is approaching again to 0. So we have limit from the left and limit from the right they both are equal to 0. Also value of the function at 0 is given to be 0. So, all the three conditions are satisfied and the function is continuous at x is equal to 0. Another point of continuity is x is equal to 2. Now, we can see that function is not defined beyond x is equal to 2. So, we have only one side limit. So, when we approach 2 from the left, where is a function going? function is approaching towards this value and this is nothing but y is equal to 1. So, from the left when we approach, the limit is 1 and it is equal to the value of the function at 1 which is also 1. So, at 2 we can see x is equal to 2 gives us value of the function as 1. So, function is continuous at 2. 
you have to remember the darkened points tell us that at those points function is defined. What are the two points of discontinuity? Let's see. At x is equal to minus 2. First of all, function is not defined here. So we have only one sided limit. So when we approach minus 2 from the right, so that's the only way we can approach. We see that a function is moving towards 2. So here, limit of the function fx as x tends to minus 2 from the right, because we have a plus sign, it is equal to 2. But the value of the function is not defined. We see an empty circle here. It means function is not defined. As they both are not equal, it's a point of discontinuity. Let's see what happens at x is equal to 1. Now, at x is equal to 1, we can approach the function from this side and we can approach the function from this side. So, from the left, when we approach, we see a function is approaching this point and the value, the limit is 1. When we approach 1 from the right, again a function is tending towards 1. So, limit from the left and limit from the right, they both are equal to 1. So, they are same. But function value at 1 is not 1 because we are given function at 1 is equal to half. So, function at 1 is half. So, this is a point of discontinuity. Thank you.